Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and yes, today I will start my solo playthrough of Maraca Ibo by Mastermind Alexander Fister. This was really one of my few must-have games from this year's Essen and I'm really, really happy playing this on camera. I played the multiplayer game really now various times actually. I'm still not claiming I'm playing it very well because there are a lot of options and a lot of replayability in this one. But I've never played this game solo before, so yeah, let's see how things go, huh? Shall we? Okay, and here we are. That's the setup for the solo play, which is not really different to the um, two-player game, actually. I decided to go with a very simple um, mission, pretty much. A very simple story card. doesn't have a story. It simply tells you where to place new quests as we move along the game. Um, and yeah, I'm not playing with any of the legacy tiles here. I really don't want to spoil the surprise for you. As I mentioned, I will play against Gene, the AI player here. You can play this game on various difficulty levels. I decided in the end to go with a medium difficulty. So on very easy, you have five A cards. On easy, I think you shuffle in a C card. And then um, on the medium level, I also added a B card. So I think overall there should be seven AI cards. We will go through this several times. At least I think, I think each round now barely is around five turns or so in this game, plus or give or take. Really depends a little bit on uh, how good or bad we are doing. And yeah, bear with me. I never played against her, not, ev not even on very easy. I only played the game in multiplayer version of the game. So really, let's see how things go. Jean will be the yellow ship. I will sail as the blue ship. And there are not a lot of components she's really using. She's not going after money. She doesn't really is concerned around sailors and whatnot. So all she has is the ship, her explorer, some influence discs and of course her victory point marker down here we all start at zero and yeah again i have no clue how things will go that's my player tableau again here we are really following the standard player setup so i will start with two of my i think assistants they're called now and again keep in mind i'm playing with a german version of the game most of the stuff is really language independent but yeah you will definitely see some, I don't know, cards that show stuff like here, this master bill, it's a Baumeister in German and some other um, things here too. I decided to go with this career card, usually getting two and choose one and I, this is, I think, honor. So we can get some extra victory points and or coins by fulfilling amount of quests here or getting influence at the nations or on this um, explorer track down there. And if we basically have completed all of those, we can flip it and then we gain some more points here. Then we have some improvements on our ship. This is our strength, I believe. It's been called in the, in the English version of the game. But again, I will explain everything as I go. If I would now really explain you the game this would easily take 45 minutes or so and again you would have forgotten anything <laughs> everything when i really start playing it um it's like with most of alexander fister's games um when you read them you see oh man there's so much stuff going on how should i really deal with all of this but then you start playing and things feel totally natural and that's the same here as well um, these are my starting cards. Um, I have to place one into my, uh, I don't know what it's called, I believe planning spaces or so. Yeah, I think these are planning spaces and four cards at hand. So in theory you start with eight cards. They come from the A deck and three cards go to the discard pile. Four you keep in your hand and one you have to place on your planning board here too. And that's for me the master builder as I already showed you. And I think with that being said, let's simply get started. We start the game with eight coins. And yes, I went for the nice metal coins. They have very strange denominations, so a lot of fibers actually, and only very few ones and twos. But in the end, it turned out to be okay. Even in a four player game, we never really ran out of coins. Interesting. Very quickly, we will play this game over four rounds. A round basically ends when one of the players makes it all the way around the Car Caribbean Sea here back to um, basically Havana. So that's uh, relatively similar to Great Western Trail, if you're familiar with that. But here you're really actively ending around. In Great Western Trail, basically each of the players had their own um, pace pretty much here really. If the first player goes there, the round ends and everyone gets beamed back to Havana and then we go into the next round. And each round consists of several turns, depending on how far you go or how fast you are going. 
Um, there are some interim scoring that you're doing when someone comes in here, basically. I will explain that to you later on too, which also this works a little bit differently in the solo game. So Gene, our AI player, works totally different in that perspective. And yeah, but our scoring is pretty much the same. And again, we do that four times, then after each round, basically play some new quests here on the board. Right now we only start with one because we are only playing a two player game in this case. Um, and then again, yeah, after the fourth round, we tally up our final score, which again, that's also different to the standard multiplayer game. But again, I will explain that to you once we get there. And then, yeah, whoever has the most victory point, most likely Gene, will be the winner of the game. And I think with that being said, let's get started. In solo, the player actually always goes first. And so, yeah, this means that we have to make a choice. The first thing that you have to do, again, very similar to Great Western Trail, is how far you want to move. You have to move at least one space, but you can move up to seven spaces. There might be differences in a lot of those cards, for example, but usually it's between one and seven. But to be honest, I have never seen a card that would let you move further, actually, to be honest, in seven spaces, which is already quite a lot, actually. Um, we have cities and we have villages. We can pretty much really decide where we want to to stay, to be honest. Um, it's really totally on up to us what we want to do, but depending on where you end your move, similar to a Great Western Trail again, sorry for all those um, comparisons, but that's really the one piece that really feels very similar to Great Western is this whole movement. The rest is very unique, the rest should, lost my track of trail of thought now yeah again where you end your movement that's depending on what you can do so for example here in santiago you can first trade in some of your resources and then you get to take the city action here which is never a bad thing and i think this is what i want to do i know for a fact that gene will move a little bit faster maybe than i do but stopping here at santiago is usually never a bad idea unless there is something going on somewhere where you really want it to go first but here let's move in here so we are moving one space that was basically already our phase one then we are coming or phase a then we are coming to phase b pretty much where we can either take the city action or, or the village action. We are in the city, so we take the village and uh, city action. The first thing that we do is to, we can deliver the goods that are here in demand. And in this case, that's I think tobacco. So how can we deliver tobacco? We have to look at our multi-purpose cards, which is really something I always like in games. And that's really nicely done here too. Here, this card, for example, would produce tobacco. Here, I think that's sugar cane, I believe, tobacco and tobacco. So we have a lot of tobacco in the end. So I think there's no reason not to um, basically deliver this tobacco. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gone there. And again, you have some choices at the start of the game because you're choosing your five cards out of eight. So I think let's get rid of the sailor, I believe it is. Yeah, Matrose, it's a sailor. We will simply discard this card, so it's really out of here. So we are only using it to deliver this cargo, which in this case is tobacco. And in order to deliver, we can now, and this is really a bonus, we can take one of those discs and place it onto Santiago to really show, hey, we have delivered that cargo there. There are two discs on each of those, so that's a little bit different to Great Western Trail, which is also you're unlocking special powers. In Great Western Trail, you usually only have one disc that you can remove here. It's really two discs on each of those before you really get the benefit. So you have to do that at least twice. There are other ways of getting rid of those discs. But yeah, I think the first thing that we want to do is to get this special ability unlocked. Right now it's not unlocked, there's still a disc on it, but this pretty much increases our hand size to six, which is always nice in a game like this. So let's grab that disc we have shown that's delivered in a one, two player game, really doesn't matter. And there's always a space for one because no matter how many tobacco you have, you only can deliver once. Um, in this game and then at the end of the round so when we have sailed through all of those discs are removed and then for the next round it's totally available again next we will go for the city action that's a very simple one this one here simply gives us one additional assistant which we can use so we take him oops and place this guy next to our ship. And you use those assistants for all kinds of stuff. A lot of the cards, like the Pioneer here or the Discoverer here, they basically, this one, you simply have to spend one assistant so you put him back to the common um, supply. And this Discoverer here, this is someone who has to, you have to place next to a village so you can use him later when you move to that location and whatnot. So you're really having assistance is always a good thing. And besides taking the assistant here, we also get to take one 
exactly one village action. So that's one A. You can basically have two village actions and it would be two A's or you can have it up to three A's. Usually getting three of those village actions um, demand you to sail much faster through the Caribbean. So if, if you're really moving fast and you can take more village action. But I think I will explain this to you as well. And there's a handy dandy player overview here which shows you what you can do with one of those village actions. You can either buy a card you can simply gain one buck out of that or you can basically get rid of all of your cards at hand and if you I think at least dodge one or I think it's at least one then you get two dollars for that. I think right now the idea was really to buy a card and you can either buy a card from your hand or you can buy a card from your planning space up there. You only have three planning spaces and the only way to free those up is really by building those. And I think having the master builder out there is never a bad thing. It gives you three points at the end of the game. And we basically, for every card we are building after we have built this one, we are paying $1 less. And if we get a second master builder, that's really cumulative. So you really can add up. But I've never seen that more than twice, actually, that someone has two master builders out there. But maybe there could be a good way, reason basically going for more and more of those master builders. So I think I will now spend six of our $8. And really, money can be very tight, especially in the first round of the game. So that's six doubloons we are spending here. And then I think we will place, normally you put them to the right of your board. I will place them um, basically on the bottom of my player board, you know, because yeah, table space. And you really have a lot of cards at the end of the game. So having, I don't know, eight, nine, ten cards is really not that uncommon in this game. But yeah, we now have built our first card out there. We can use him as of now, but that's already the end of our action. So next we could still go if we could fulfill one of our career goals, for example. But right now that's not going to happen. And um, as a free action, we could place more cards into our planning area here. And I think this is what we should be doing. So I'm pretty sure we want to build the discoverer soon. So I will place him up there. When he's here, I can no longer use his icons here. So I cannot use him for deliveries or for fulfilling quests, which is the lower symbol here. So this is really now blocked. So we are planning or we committed ourselves to more or less yeah, building this this cover doesn't really make sense but you get the idea we cannot use it anymore and now uh, at the end of the round we are going to refill our hand of cards and i could have parked more than just one card if i want if i want i could have placed all three cards down there in the planning area but i think this would be a little bit too premature now i get to choose if i want to fill up from basically this display here there are always four cards available to us but each card is cost me one dollar or one doubloon so i'm not quite sure if i want to do that i'm down to two doubloons um there are nice cards especially this missionary here he could be really really beneficial actually but oh man huh but do i want to spend because i need the corn um this symbol could really help me there and I don't have any corn at hand. Maybe I should do that at least once. Or maybe I could go for another master builder, actually. Why not? Let's go for this master builder. So that's one doubloon. So we are paying two and getting one back. And I think for the second card, we simply take one from the yeah, huge deck of cards, actually. And this card says pirate hunting. Wow. That's insane. Okay, that costs, uh, we have to spend three of our strength for $2 and we gain, wow, $3 or throw gold coin in coins so with the green background are always income spaces or something that you get at the end of each round or turn but each round and we could go also gain additional victory points income if we get this synergy token here oh wow that's a nice card and not too difficult to achieve actually nice let's refill the display and there is also one um ship improvement where which allows you to take those cards for free and this i think will be most likely the second one i'm going to unlock after i've increased my hand size and yeah that's already the end of my turn so let's move over to jean actually so we will simply draw her very first ai card so yeah let's do that and we pretty much follow the card top to bottom so here she simply moves one space and she only moves to cities or quest spaces she's never going to any villages um, so yeah let's do that first so 
hello neighbor and then she will either complete a quest there is no quest she's now at a city which means she will either now place one of her discs or she will basically get um, a card um, from a project card pretty much and I think that's the third card from the display so she's also messing with the display in a very active way so that seems to be a very clever AI to be honest clever and yeah I think she can place disc so let's grab the very first one here this doesn't bring her any victory points yet but of course she will place more discs and this really this these are points that she gets basically at the end of each round and this can be really huge it seems to be very huge actually Again here, this doesn't really make a difference. So there's a lot of, of space there. She's never taking the actions on the, the city card. No, she will next follow the action on her eye card. In this case, this means she will move her explorer one, two spaces here. She will not gain any rewards here for it. However, she will get a, she could get, end up with a lot of victory points if her explorer is basically ahead of ours. I think this can be as of 10 points, 20 points or 30 points, really depending on where she ended up uh, basically in the lead. So with 30 points, she would have been at least 11 spaces ahead of us. Not unlikely to be honest, because you cannot do everything in this game usually. But I feel against Jean, we might need to balance our strategy a little bit. Could be wrong, but I will try it this way. And yeah, that's already the end of her action. You see, this can be very, very quick. Over to us. First thing we have to move, and now we can make a choice if you want to sail to Puerto Plata or to Santo Domingo. They both require corn and we just got a corn card. So I think that was the um, important piece. In order to decide actually where we want to go to, we would really need to see, do we want to move our explorer or do we want to increase our strength and getting one influence? Again, getting influence is something that can score you a lot of points at the end of the game. Whew, that's interesting now. Um, she's already in the lead. If I go here, we would be in the lead actually. And maybe I should do it, but the problem is I only get one coin. But again, one coin is also not really bad. Oh, that's a toughie actually. That's a very tough one. No, I think let's go for the fighting power. Oh, it should be because no, there's no, no. We, we are because now we have to also look at our career card. Um, hmm. So we want influence, but we also want um, to progress on the explorer bar. So both are important, actually. So yeah, I think let's mm, sail to Santo Domingo. Yeah. So that's one and two. Again, we can move up to seven spaces. So we are now here at Santo Domingo. Yet again, we can deliver something. And yes, that was the plan. So we will deliver um, this corn here. Again, this card is simply discarded. We take a disc from our ship so yes we already have unlocked our first special ability now and there's also a scoring if she has more of those yellow circles on her ai board than we do she also scores a lot of points so also something to keep in mind but this will trigger really already at the end of this round so we are now going to drawing up to six cards which is very nice and on top of this will also deliver something so if for whatever reason she's also sailing here for example then yes she will not be able to deliver anything here but then she will go for a card instead next we will take the action which is simply to move up to two spaces we could stop here um, we don't have to move the full distance here and in this case i really hmm, i'm thinking if i should do that actually because these are three goals this is only one goal but we really want to make it over these um, uh, thresholds here uh, if we make it over the blue one here we can basically claim one of our um, career goals and there's also a green one here which gives us then victory points if we make it there and who that's tough but really money is so tight in this game but I really don't want her to be in the lead because what you do is you simply skip over any explorers here. So I think, yeah, let's do that. One and two might be another bad idea, but that's how life is. Um, therefore, I ended my movement here. I simply get one coin. Next, I could still park some cards. And actually, this is a nice one. So I think I want to park this pirate hunting here too. I think I should be able to build this hopefully relatively soon. Um, I'm not able to fulfill any of my career goals yet. So we are drawing our cards and now I'm drawing up to six cards. And I think I might as well go for four cards from this deck here because four cards now is definitely not bad. We should be able to get something meaningful out of this. Yeah, I think that's okay. 
So one, two, three, four. And there are always, I believe, 60 cards, which is the so-called A deck. They're always the same, but then there's a huge pile of B cards. I think it's 80 or 100 cards. I don't know. And you only take 40 out of those and shuffle those together. So there's really a huge amount of replayability alone by the cards here. Nice. And those are the cards. So here we have a patron. So yes, if you want to support my show, by the way, yeah, be, you become a patron. You, you should see something popping up sometime during this video and you will find a link to my patron page in the description of this video. And I think I should also take the time now for a shout out to my patrons, to one of my patrons. I think today it's Leroy. So thanks so much for your support. Really appreciate it. Here we have a person, Amaro Pargo. Um, we have a legionnaire and an innkeeper. Yeah, okay, that's another assistant I could place. Nice, have to look at those. And that's again the end of my turn. So let's draw our next card and that's a B card. So this could be, I think it's, I don't know, agile. I don't know what it is. And she will now move two spaces. And because this is the, uh, basically the arrow down. This means she will also move down here, but it's not one space. She will move two spaces. That's her first space. And as there is nothing here, she will simply move here to the next space to Maracaibo. So she's in the city, so she will either place a disc or take a card. Again, she will go for a disc. But what's more important, I'm not able to deliver something to Maracaibo this round. So I will not be able to improve my ship, for example. I can still go there taking the action, but unfortunately, um, yeah, this is the first option here. Delivery of goods is something I cannot do anymore. And of course, she will still take her action, which means she will remove yet another of her discs. And as of the third round, so if she draws the card in round three and four, she will also score four immediate victory points. Are you kidding me? But this means she will now already score two points at the end of this round. Back to us. Wow, I have to make a very tough call now. So in theory, I could also make it now to Maracaibo in order to take combat action there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Again, I can move up to seven. In theory, I could also move, let's say, one, two, three, four spaces and end my space here on a village in Kumana. And then because I moved four or more spaces, I could take now two village action. And then if I would take my full movement with seven, I could even take seven, uh, three of those village actions. The problem is, I think it's not gonna be enough doing everything I need to do, actually. So I'm not sure if that's my best bet, actually. So I might as well move here to Maracaibo instead and do a, cannot deliver something that's really a bummer, but I think that's what I should be doing. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Again, there is no PVP or whatever in this game. I cannot deliver anything because Jean already did that, curses. And then, yeah, I will take a combat action, which means I will grab one of those combat tiles here. They're well shuffled, though I have no clue what those are. So let's take this one. And that's the tile I've drawn. And the combat is the one piece that's, I would say, a little bit cumbersome because there are a lot of, let's say, options you can take. Not at the start of the game, because at the start of the game, you simply have two different combat actions available. So you can take the first line here and or the second line here, depending on how many combat points you have or the nation has. The first one simply allows you to place influence out there or gaining influence in the nation, whereas the second one is one thing where you really can basically um, make the nations more strong. And I think this is what we should be doing actually. But therefore we have to make a choice. Um, this top line here says whoever is last pretty much, so whoever, which of the nations has the fewest cities out there, or the fewest influence out there, gets an extra three combat points. Right now they're all at zero or they have no cities out there, so we can basically ignore that. I could now decide to help France. If I would decide to help France, I would gain an immediate victory point, awesome stuff, and but I only had three of those influence points and I need at least four for the actions I'm planning to do. Similar thing for Britain or England. If I would go for England, I would gain two coin. Awesome. But I only had two things available. And I think there's a way I could get more coins. So I think in this case, 
let's fight for Spain, which means Spain now gives us four combat points, which allows to place one of their influence discs out there on the board. And we have to place it into a space with a flag, which is definitely what we are going to do. So I think, yeah, let's go for Spain. So we grab the leftmost disc here. So this is now worth one victory point in theory. And we multiply this by the title we are getting in that nation towards the end of the game. So let's say we are making it up to here, for example, then we would multiply this uh, basically by, by two here or by three. And there are other, other some uh, modifiers there, but again, I will come to that a little bit later on. So for now, let's place this cube and we get to decide to which of those flags we are moving this. And apparently we need money. Um, victory points are also cool. So I think there is one that gives us two victory points, but I think getting for money early in the game is more important. Yeah, let's do that. So I will place my the Spanish cube here. And yeah, this gives us an immediate two doubloons. Really, really, really what we needed. So there is a way that we might be able to, yeah, pretty much build another card early on. Awesome. But because we just helped the Spanish nation here, this also means we get influence of the same nation, apparently. So we have just gained our first noble rank here in Spain. And that's the one thing which I don't like. It would be very, very nice if they would have put it somewhere here, what this title actually would be. Right now, it's simply a multiplier. Mm, okay, works for the game. But thematically, it would be very nice if this is now considered to be, I don't know what it is. I think not a Duke, of course. Duke would be far right, for example. But this also reminds me so much of the um, Sid Meier's Pirates back there, where you also were gaining those titles and getting more land. And, so, and I think also Port Royal, the computer game, was very similar, where you could gain those ranks for each of those nations. Really really cool but yeah I think at least we are now on the map so someone knows us already so I think that was definitely a job well done we are simply taking this combat tiled and place it like this though there are some cards and some of the um, career cards which refer to those but in this case yeah we simply hold on to that and yeah again that was the end of our round I could I have never not played a card in this round so in theory I could still decide to park a card in the planning step. I cannot deliberately discard those cards. That's really the one thing that I can't do. So I have to hold on to this. And I think right now I don't want to, uh, on the other hand, maybe the innkeeper. I believe I want to build the innkeeper soon. Yeah, let's, let's park her at least. So I get to draw at least one card. And I think I will go simply for a card from the draw pile here. And I think that's a trainer or so. And he could be worth three victory points at the end of the game. We would place him uh, in the village 16. And if we stop our movement there, um, then we can basically give away two of our strength points to gain seven bucks and two village action. Ooh, he's a nice fella, actually. But again, that's the end of our round. Move over to Jean. So we will simply draw her next card. She will move two spaces and she will take this route here because again, that's the arrow that's above. So in theory, she would have moved to this quest location here, but in this case, she's going to end the round relatively quickly. So she will move one space and two spaces up here. So that's that. And then she will move in here and this will then end her round actually, or end our round. Well, that's really, really quick actually. <laughs> wow, that's tough. What are you doing to me? Anyway, she cannot place a disc here because there is no delivery space. So in this case, she will simply take the first card from the display which happens to be the missionary. We will place it next to her player board. So this will also bring her one victory point at the end of each round. Let's reveal a new card. Let the smuggler, the smuggler is really a nice fella. He's really great. We used him various times in our multiplayer board. And this is really a very strong card. If you can optimize your deck, of course. And then she still has to take her normal action, which in this case, she will simply gain one influence here in Spain, and yeah, she's following my lead actually, because I already made Spain stronger in the Caribbean, in the Spanish main, and yeah, in this case, she will also follow this. Then it's back to me. 
Oh man, and I have a very difficult choice. In theory, most ideally, I would move in here, to be honest. Unfortunately, I'm out of court, so I cannot make the delivery. Otherwise, I really would have been able to get rid of two of my discs here, which is really, really nice. Here I could take, uh, that's, that could work too, actually. This could work too. Or I could also go for this quest tie because I have two of those looking glasses here. I could gain two gold for each of my compasses. Right now I have one compass pre-printed on my board actually and there are other cards that also give you some compass actually. So that wouldn't be a terrible thing either. And then I could go for this action here which could give me a village action <coughs> for each compass I have. And I have one compass. So I think this could also help us actually. And maybe I should do that. I think that's a good one. So we will move now one, two spaces up here. We will deliver some sugar, which is this guy here. He's great, but in order to play him, we need sp uh, Spain needs to have three cubes out there on the map. And this will really take time. It costs a lot of money. So let's simply use him to deliver the sugar. We will most certainly go for this disc which we're going to place like this again they will be removed at the end of the round anyway and now i because i have one compass i gain exactly one village action now and i guess the idea is to build the innkeeper here i have to spend only five doubloons keep in mind because of my master builder but i have to spend it anyway so let's grab her and put her right next here. So she will also score me two points at the end of the game. I have to take one of my dudes here and have to place it next to space eight here or onto space eight. This is the one piece that's a little bit confusing actually, but I could now stop here and take her action, which says, hey, you gained three doubloons and you gained two victory points for each of your assistants out of the map. And yes, the innkeeper counts there too, or each of your own assistance that is and i think gene will never place assistance anyway but i think these were all of my actions yeah this was my town action i'm down to wonder bloom kind of embarrassing i still get to refill my hand i think i want to hold on to my last bloom so let's see what we get and that's another name character also someone who's looking after spain apparently Lawrence de graf he gives me one extra movement so whenever i move my explorer i gain one extra movement and Oh, wow, he's great. I need him. Oh, I need him. Two victory points income and two money co money income. Ooh, that's really, really amazing. But yeah, that's the end of my round. And then, yeah, she will end the round, actually. So let's see. She will move two spaces, but she can only move um, one space because of those hand symbols. So let's do that. So she will move in here. Normally, a player would now gain $3, and that's the uh, three points, and that's the end of his action. Not so with uh, Jean. She will still look after her card, which again, she will take the third card, and she will gain some influence in England now. Okay, let's grab the ruins now instead. So that's another point for her and she gets this point every round. Let's refill and uh, that's a, a diplomat, consul, consul I believe. Yeah, she gives you five victory point income if you happen to gain those synergy markers, which we haven't seen yet. And yeah, she will still gain one influence here in England, but right now England is not worth anything because they haven't spread their influence out there. And for me, this could be now to say, oof, I don't care about England myself because she's now in the lead here. Why should I give her points? Actually, I could focus on France because there no one is here. Or I could continue on my journey for Spain. That is. Um, and I think, yeah, then we pretty much do the end of round income stuff. For Jean, that's really simple. She simply gets the leftmost spot that's basically now revealed. And that's two victory points and she gets one point for each card she has. So in total, she will now score the first one, oh, sorry, one, two, three, four victory points. So she's already in the lead here. But again, she will score those points now every round and she will continue to unlock those. And well, that's now insane. But that's already the end of round scoring for her. We will go through a somewhat longer process. So we could either now build a card. This is set by that. And then we will refill our hand. Unfortunately, we have out of money, so we cannot build any more cards. But that's also not bad because we can still go for two victory points, which we will happily take. 
then we get our income right now our only income is the one up here so we get some money income right now we are at eight which means we will start the next round with additional eight doubloons which is really really important there is another victory point income track which unfortunately starts at zero so we are not scoring any immediate points and yes there are some great cards out there which allow you to uh, increase that and i think i already showed some of you those to you okay that was already the income next we will remove all of those brown discs from the display here so this is gone then we will basically make a new offering i will do that off camera so there we have the embassy the harbor pirate hunting and the mercenary okay that's pretty nice too us uh, the embassies uh, this can be very nice actually next we will reveal the next prestige building which is pretty much our round tracker here too and instead of building any card from your hand or from your display maybe i should have explained that more clearly you could always decide to play one of these prestige buildings i believe far they cost all 20 or so maybe yeah, i think they could also but i'm not sure you always have to place a meeple on this so he's gone for good but the first one to get there is two points and these are all coming with end game scoring cards and you this is the only way how you get those crown prestigious uh, uh crown synergy symbols here for example which you might be able to use from some of your other project cards out there so this one here gives you basically four points for each barrier your explorer have crossed through and this one gives you oh that's a great one this gives you two points for each combat tile you have right now we have one combat tile keep in mind i will remember and yeah this is now worth oh if we go there it would give us two points for that and uh, i'm relatively certain we will see more of those combat tiles coming up for us if you would have played with some of uh, the legacy or with another story card we would now check for the story tokens if we have meet those or met those right now we are not playing with those so we don't care and then we are basically moving everyone back to Havana. Again, that's the one piece that's a little bit different from Great Western Trail, because in Great Western Trail you basically do whatever it takes to make you through, so everyone has its own pace. But in this case, yeah, we are all starting a new round. And last thing to do is to check the story card here at, at the end of round one, because we are one to four players, we are placing now two new quests at six and 12. So one goes here so this could in theory slow down um jean somewhat i think she definitely does and the next one goes to 12 which is down here at santa marta and there's also a whole pile of those story cards so there are um, i think three uh, simple ones or straightforward ones without any legacy or campaign story and then there is the campaign you can play which really will alter the board you're not gluing stuff you're not ripping cards apart you will simply have some legacy tiles which you place on top of those depending on how well the campaign is going really really interesting stuff and you can reset it really every time you can also say i want to play with this chapter i want to start all over again really totally up to you but that's pretty much the end of the round um we will be next but i think the video was already long ago i really hope i can increase my speed as of the next video i'm not quite sure how many rounds i will be able to make if i'm really quick i may want to maybe we can take the remaining three rounds in one video but i leave it a little bit up to you so if you say one round per video is fine i want i prefer shorter videos i can do that if you say no please keep going make the complete uh basically second part only of this game that's fine too just let me know and i will see what i can do and i really hope you're enjoying it really hope i'm not messing things up again i have never played against gene so far so i could misinterpret some of the rules but yeah hope to see you soon and until then bye bye <laughs>